never believe me. And I said, but you don't understand. You, yes, I'm singing a lot of comfortable hit songs from the past, but yes, I'm also singing a whole load of songs that I've never sung before on stage. But the early days, the excitement was different because the Shadows and I were almost, the, well, we, not almost, we were <clears throat> in amongst the first group of people to ever sing rock and roll in Europe. Marty Wilde, Billy Fury, Dickie Pride, myself, the Shadows. Um, and so we were breaking new ground all the time and it, that sort of excitement, I guess, will never come back. And how different, <coughs> different Cliff, are the, are the audiences these days? In a sense, Tom Jones makes that joke on stage about they used to throw knickers onto the stage and now they throw their surgical corsets or whatever. <laughs> you know. uh, but, I but, mean, are the audiences different? I suppose they are, but I've grown up with a number of people. I don't know how much Tom's audience has changed over the years. Uh, I guess... What's happened is my, the, the age range has changed. It used to be 10-year-olds, and now it's my age, 60-year-olds. They've all grown up with me. I mean, I seem to have gone full cycle now, because there was a time when even my friends would say, you know, I bought your new record. You know, I went into the HMV store and went, can I have the um, Cliff Richard record, please, just in case anyone was watching them buy one. And at the same time, you have this accolade, which I suppose is a burden as well of being the Peter Pan of <laughs> rock and roll or the Peter Pan of pop. Um, you've always said that, You've never had a nip and a tuck, as some people have, but uh, except you tried Botox once or something. Botox. Botox. That yes. sounds better, doesn't it? <laughs> <laughs> I did. My eyebrows dropped, and I didn't like the, f didn't like the look of it, so uh, I, I, I don't think I'll bother with that again. But, you know, I, you, know you get lines, and I've got lines and things, and I, I guess for men it's different, though. I guess for women it's far more uh, uh, of a critical stage if, if they are getting wrinkly. But... Um, I don't look too bad, and I, so I, I, I can't be bothered with... I don't think I'll Well, you do look like Peter Pan, and is it, do you think, since it's not nip and tuck, is it, is it swimming, is it tennis, is it diet? You've been on a diet for 35 years? Yeah, well, I've, I'm eating regime more than a diet. Yeah. I mean, I, I try not to eat more than one meal a day, and I've stuck by that pretty, pretty religiously right the way through. And uh, I don't see it myself as a, as a Peter Pan of pop anymore. It's the, I kept saying it was a rip... Van Winkle of rock. <laughs> but the Peter Pan of pop was a great pleasure to hear people call me that originally. But once I hit 40, then 50, and now 60, it's really a bit of a, a pressure. And in terms of fitness, you were just talking about uh, the diet, doing it religiously. Uh, and of course, I mean, that's an obvious cue to the fact that you do a lot of things religiously since that turning point in your life when you found God. Which was when exactly? Well, I don't know about exactly, but in 1966, I did appear on the Billy Graham um, platform I at Earl's Court. And I'd been a Christian f from about a year and a bit before, so 64-ish, mm. 65 maybe. Mm. And um, I can't put my foot a finger on an exact date, but there was a period of time when I gave up, in fact, trying to tear it down. I, I spent quite a, a three, four years in a way, trying to disprove it so that I could move on to the next one, to di disprove Christianity. And uh, one rabbi wrote a book in New York about some, why do bad things happen to good people or whatever. And that area of suffering, uh, suffering mm. of the good and so on, is an area I've discussed with Billy Graham, among others, and, and it's an awkward area. And Very. I know, I know you said, for instance, about the death of your friend Jill Dando, that you were angry with God at that particular yeah. moment. It is very difficult to make sense of that, isn't it? Very difficult, but then you see it's got to be difficult. I mean, if we could absolutely understand God, I, I've got a feeling we'd have got it all wrong. Yeah. He, he wouldn't actually be the God that we're saying he is. He would be much less than that. If even science could prove him. I mean, I find it interesting that, fortunately, I've got a number of scientists who are Christians too, as well as being firm believers in science, and who's not? As the, uh, the famous atheist quote, I'm an atheist, thank God, somebody, somebody <laughs> yes. once said on, on yes. one occasion. But in terms, you've said, for instance, that, you're, um, that you don't consider yourself celibate, but obviously you've never married and so on. Are you therefore in this beautiful house and so on, sometimes lonely? No, I've never felt lonely. I, I have a lot of really, really good friends. And over the years, you, you, you cultivate that, I think. You, it's, you don't, I suppose you do choose your friends to a certain extent, but it seems to me that I've met people at the right time and I've built up a, a blockade of people that can, can support me in any kind of need that I might be going through. Well, you know what it's like. You know, the, the media itself can be so vicious, 
so helpful in so many ways and yet so vicious sometimes that then if I was on my own, I'd have trouble. But I've always got someone I can phone up and talk to and, and ease myself out of that. And uh, it's no problem. And so, and so are you going to just carry on? I guess you are, really. Carry on playing the old guitar and yeah. until the day you drop. And I think so. As you go on your way to the funeral, <laughs> lift to the coffin lid and do a quick chorus of <laughs> I'm going on a summer holiday or, or whatever. Yes. Um, but well, I mean, are you going to carry right on to the end? I think so. What I'd like to do is slow down a little. What I'd like to do is pace myself to, if I did two things in one year, do only one of them that year and do the other one the following year. So I, I would have more time to myself, for my friends, my family, and to just enjoy. I mean, I, I really, I have enjoyed myself, of course I have. But I, whatever happens, whatever, no matter how much you enjoy yourself, it is still your work. And I don't know that the everyday man on the street will quite understand how pressurized our world is. So if I can pull away a little bit and ease the tension generally, I think I could enjoy myself now till, till the day I lift that coffin lid. Well, we thank you very much, and we look forward to the 130th single. <laughs> thank you very much. Thanks a million, Chef. Thank you, David. Cliff Richard.